Well, buttons have been clicked. I don't hear any whirring. I don't hear any clanking. Well, that's good. We might get a visitor today. Ooh. It is possible. Somebody ask a question in a in the 15mm science fiction group on Facebook about does anybody do any painting live streams other than Games Workshop? And I couldn't resist myself. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, somebody does. But... So what you're saying is be on your best behaviour for once. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't see anything changing at all because I think by the time we get to 10 o'clock it'll just be the two of us. <sighs> yeah, oh, I don't mind that at all. So here's where we ended up at the end from last week's effort. So there's the swordsman, which I was basically finishing off in the stream. And then, immediately after, and by immediately I mean within the next day or so, I did these guys. So, the plan is to work on the personalities, which I did prep during the live stream. And we'll have seen the repairing of the lance. Things like that. Is this a second packet of barbarian personalities? or is this... These are high elf personalities. Oh, right. Right, right. I remember. Now, you just threw me when I saw what looked like a creature in there. And I'm thinking, hang on. Like... Isn't that one of those big cats out of the barbarian personalities? Well, no, it's a centaur. It's a centaur. So, and the dog has chosen the absolute right moment to start whining. So. Well, dogs do what dogs do. That's you right. From that. And dogs do, dogs do, dog do. Um. Elven Flesh. One of my preferred skin tones. It's a very good skin tone. So, did you click go in that order? Oh yeah, that was done. That oh, was a done deal. That was a done deal. That's my biggest one to date. I love your style, I really do. <laughs> the the uh, the Aussie dollar against the pound's not too bad at the moment. Yeah, um, but... I decided not to go with the PayPal currency conversion because that seems to have added another ten bucks onto it. <laughs> right. And I'm like, no. So you'll let your bank do the conversion. Yeah. Okay. So you'll let your bank get 10 bucks onto it instead of PayPal. Well, bank's got my money anyway. What difference does yeah, it make? Well, you know, there is that. I need to put some goggles on. I can't see. Yes. I um I visited Eureka Miniatures yesterday during the afternoon. Mm. I placed an order with them for a reinforced platoon of Bersaglieri for my Second World War Italians to go along with the tanks and 
hummered cars and stuff I got some weeks back from the um, Battlefront release, re-release of Midwar. And uh, yeah, caught up with Nick, Nick Robson, um, and that was really nice. It was a very, very pleasant experience. Well, you used to do some work for them, didn't you? Um, I've never worked for Eureka. I uh, thought you did their web store. No, no, a friend of mine what? did their web store. Ah, right. I knew there was a link there. Yeah. But, um, some Someone else came in to take over that particular role, and I'm afraid, as far as I'm concerned, they're not doing a terribly good job because the Eureka website's... Stuck in the 90s. Yes. I don't know what your experience with it is, but it looks to me like some of the static assets have disappeared, and so I get all of those missing image icons all over the place. Um, well, I can't say that I saw any of that when I was looking at them more heavily, but mm. that may be the case this year. No, for me, it was just a positively slow molasses slow experience oh yeah that too which is like hmm do i wait five minutes for this single miniature to get added to my cart or mm. do i just not bother <laughs> <laughs> yeah the other thing is he said he'd sent me a couple of emails and i don't have them so I don't know what's going on there. I've checked my spam folder. Don't know. Well, it's good that there's still, you know, local manufacturers. Yeah. And he's a genuinely... That's good. He's, he's a very, very nice man. Really genuinely nice human being, so... Well, I'll take your word on that, never having met him and never mm. being likely to, but, you know, it's good. It's good when there's, there's a small business out there that you'd like to support that's also run by good people. I'm the same way with my beard care products. Yeah. That's good. Never mind the fact that he's about twice as expensive as his competition. He's a local small businessman who's a genuinely good guy. Hmm. And these are the people and all that, like and to all that money, Yeah, all that money he's used to expand his range and increase his staff, and he's building up a good business out of it, which yeah. is good. Anyway. Hmm. So it sounds like you've had a good time. I had a very good experience yesterday, so I'm feeling a little bit better about the world. And how much did you spend to get that good feeling? Uh, absolutely <laughs> nothing yesterday, but about 80 bucks a month or so ago. Fair enough. Which, you know, again... It's not cheap, but doesn't matter. Given, Cheaper other things. Well, well, this is true, but you also can't get Italian infantry at the moment from Battlefront. Like, they've re-released the vehicles, but they haven't re-released the infantry. Because Flames of War 4th Edition is a vehicle game. The infantry is an afterthought. Because people like driving tanks around. And I don't know that you could ever aim the word simulation at Flames of War. <laughs> As another friend of mine summed up a very, very long time ago, Flames of War is a game played with World War II miniatures, not a World War II game. Which is a very astute observation. Anyhow. 
So yeah, so and we went to see the third of the um, fantastical creatures. Secrets of Dumbledore last night. Is that the one where he comes out of the closet? Yep. Absolutely. Happens in the first five minutes of the film. Spoilers. Uh, see, here I was trying to make a joke about what's no. his face, Ian McKellen. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's something I really don't like. I don't like it when Hollywood decides to incorporate defining personality traits of the actor into a character that's long since been pre-established. Well, it was pre-established. Not officially, but most people have said Dumbledore was gay for a yeah, long but time. But no, not, not based on Ian McKellen. McKellen. No, based on the book. Joe remarked on it. Um... And in this case, it's Jude Law anyway, so, you know. We did have the conversation about trying to figure out whether as many men would turn for Jude Law as as many women would turn for Scarlett Johansson. But it's slightly non-PC, I guess. Never found her that attractive myself. Yeah. She's got a fantastic butt. Moving on. We all got our own tastes. Absolutely. Now I've just painted that leg as flesh. And it's not. Well, depends on your interpretation, but the foot is definitely shoe-shaped, not foot-shaped. So, off it comes. All right. Anyhow, um, I know some people have thought the film was not as good as it could be, TM, but we enjoyed it. So. Well, as long as you got your 20 bucks, 20 bucks worth out of it. <laughs> it's a gold class, so <laughs> 50. <laughs> oh, for two of you, yeah, okay. And we had food so oh. I think the night cost us pretty close to 200 yeah last time I had food in cinema gold class or no it was me sneaking in bags of McDonald's under my jumper mm -hmm. people still do that because <laughs> it's cost effective <laughs> Yeah, like, I didn't mind the food. I thought it was okay. It certainly wasn't, you know, mind-blowing. But the prices were mind-blowing. You know, and it's it's a... Well, we do this once a year, and we might as well enjoy ourselves. So it was... But, you know... Oh, and don't forget, you're doing it for the woman you love, and therefore price isn't an object. Yeah, absolutely. I'm um, <laughs> I'm running the re perpetual birthday for her at the moment. It's driving her nuts. <laughs> uh, I got her a heap of jigsaws. For her birthday, or thousand piece puzzles, you know, if I get her a 1500 or a 2000 piece puzzle, she'll just murder me in my sleep. But, um, 
we have this problem that we have a couple of cats. So, <laughs> leaving jigsaw puzzles laying around, we have experienced in the past cats nick off with bits. Um, so, she hasn't started any of them because there's a cat problem. So, I lobbed onto eBay and I went looking for jigsaw tables. Found a couple that were reasonably priced and the right size and all that kind of stuff. So I ordered one. So it's turned up. So now I have a jigsaw table on the table waiting for a jigsaw to go on it. And I happen to order another jigsaw. So I'm waiting for that to turn up. She's like, you need to stop. I'm like, stop what? Stop buying me presents. It's like, well, I did tell you that the, your birthday would go to the end of the month. Wow. Uh, I would have recommended one of those roll up mats. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that work that works too, but we got a, a jigsaw table that has a has the ability to um sit in different elevated positions as well as completely flat and it's got drawers in the side for um sorting pieces into and you can put a, a top on it and clamp the top down and you can pick it up and move it so nothing but the best eh? Hmm, nothing but the best yeah it wasn't cheap but I mean again you don't turn 60 every day unless you're me in which case it's at about 8am Or at least that's what it feels like. Well, I do hope she doesn't go back and listen to this one because you've just outed her and <laughs> you're in for trouble now. And a week, a month's worth of presents ain't going to get you off the hook for that. <laughs> so, so th there's an expression that you're only as old as as the, the the woman that you feel or the man that you feel, right? So, mm. in her case. Given how I feel this morning, that makes her a really reasonable 103 or something along those lines. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I was trying to describe to Nick yesterday what it's like getting out of bed. Uh. Can you hear Squeaky Toy? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Who'd have pets, honestly? Not me. No. That's a whole different other thing. So you made use of the um, sale code that was emailed out. I did, and quite frankly, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have placed the order. Mm -hmm. I did a um, trial run of a single miniature in the cart, went through the checkout process just to see if the code worked. Ah, oh, it does. All right. Go back, don't click confirm. Mm. Start adding more things that I wanted. Uh, which is just about all of the rest of the undead out of the Isthak range. And then mm. one of everything I didn't already have out of the, the Thanes. Mm. Guess I noticed there were some big beasties <laughs> in that. Not the biggest ones, though. I mean, two of those, they're... 
30 pounds each. And I'm like, hmm, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a little too much. They are monster miniatures, though. Yeah, well, I guess they're Rolling Fortress sort of sized. Yeah. Shame they can't cast them hollow multi multi parts. Well, I think they are. I think. Hmm. I think. Yeah, well, like I would have made a great paperweight then. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, that rolling fortress is hollow and it's still very heavy. Well, it is about a pound of lead. Yeah pewter or whatever is being used these days. Yeah, it's pewter, but what does that mean? A pound of pewter and a pound of feathers and a pound of lead all pretty much weighs the same. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) The key would be in the word pound, I suppose. That's the aim of joke. Ah... Told you it was only 103. It might have gone up one. They're actually feeling pretty good today. It's not 167. This is true. I'm reminded of... There was, a long time ago, a website called Things That My Girlfriend and I Have Argued About. Which was written by a guy by the name of Mel Millington. It's actually turned into a film. Um, and he was describing getting into the shower one morning. Um, it was a the, the whole point of the joke was that he was an English man married to a German woman, and there was this cross cultural clash. Um, and he was trying to describe the shower. And the shower had a couple of settings, one of which was jumped by thugs. Um, I'm not going to try and relate it because it's a heck of a lot funnier the way he wrote it. But just that that description perfectly sums up how I'm feeling this morning. And most mornings. To be frank, it's like some some days I roll over and look at Joe and go, "Did you beat me to death last night?" And then resurrect me at some point in the early morning hours of the morning. And she's like, "Why would I resurrect you?" <laughs> so I'm like, "Fair point." Moving on. <laughs> do note that she did say 20 minutes ago <laughs> well is it what's the time uh, 23 past so she did say half an hour ago that she was getting up to take the dog for a walk <laughs> obviously whatever she's reading on her kindle has become far more interesting than walking the dog uh... audiobooks solve that problem yes the problem with Miss Willow is is that walking Miss Willow, you need to be walking Miss Willow and not doing or thinking about anything else. Mm. This is a remarkably heavily armoured horse. Chain mail at the front with scale on the neck, and then you got plates on the back. Back, yeah. Ch- chain here too. So, and then there's a, a a blanket being thrown over the the chain, and there's some plating. So it's just wow. 
strong horse. Yes. Well, looks like a unicorn to me. Oh. I think the spike is part of the headdress, not part of the horse. I guess we'll see when you finish. Hmm. But yes, I just got out a colour to paint a horse and I've painted basically four hooves and a mouth. Tell me, does it have split hooves? Nope. Oh, that's good. So it's not a war goat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't yeah, those cleansing dark mounts. <laughs> They're split hoof horses. Uh, mm -hmm. This doesn't seem right. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It's not. Yes. Define right. <laughs> uh. Well... Now you'll have to come up with something about uh, foot and mouth disease, and that's how the skeletal death knights get their skeletal mounts. Because <laughs> they're all cloven hoofed up in the far off Isthak lands. Yeah. Well, not all, but... Well, I haven't seen any anything that's not <laughs> in the Isthak range. Yeah. yeah it's not cloven hoofed. Including all the basement. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to cover that. Basement. Mm. Oh, just there is so so many stories to tell. So so much, so much background to create and fill in, and you know. There is, there's a couple of other guys working on it at the moment. It's painfully slow progress. Well, you're recreating the whole thing from scratch, basically. Yeah. Which at the time seemed like a great idea. Oh. Not going to comment on that. There are some things I could say, but I won't. I have a lot of good ideas that turn out, in retrospect, to be... questionable. They usually start with getting up. Well, I've enjoyed that one this week. Not getting up at 6am. Yeah. Most of the time I've rolled out of bed about quarter past nine. No, I stop it. Special effort for you today. Stop it. <laughs> I'm getting jealous. So what's happening with all of that? Have you pulled the pin on it? I have. So that means you're going to have to find some other charity to... not for not until August yeah right <laughs> eh? yeah I'm tired of that yeah. this helping other people stuff out is nonsense <laughs> so the government gives you some time it's six months on six months off apparently oh there you go Although they do seem to make me want to work for the Electoral Commission. You. Well, you know, there's an election coming up and they need people on the day. and That's basically all it would be. It would be about 30 bucks for showing up to man a polling booth. To what? Hand leaflets out or to keep the peace or? Keep the peace, basically. Yeah, right. 
Oh, I might do it, but probably won't, because it also involves days of training. Right. And their own website says, our app online application form takes about half an hour to fill out, but the website times out after 20 minutes, so save your work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm just not going to bother. Mm. I'm going to put in for a postal vote, and then... No, I won't put in for a postal vote. I'll do it early voting. Make a day of it. Yeah. I have no idea who's running in my area, except for the incumbent who has divorced himself from the Labour Party and all of his uh, advertising material. It's just his name. Right. His party. I'm like, hmm, your particular party is toxic. Yes. No wonder you don't want to advertise yourself with them. Hmm. I'm sitting here wondering if there are any that are not. Yeah, but when your own members don't want your party associated with them. Yeah, that I mean, that's particularly bad, isn't it? Hmm. And I mean sitting members. Like, okay. So? But I have no idea if anyone's actually running against him. Well. <laughs> Like, I have not seen on other candidates anything. Yeah. So far. Yeah, we've been getting plenty of junk mail. I haven't seen a single thing. There you go. Haven't seen a single sign. Got uh, the letters out of... Letter saying, oh give you a postal vote to us. <laughs> like, mm, no. Actually, that's something I saw just on the subject of giving your votes to political parties. Mm. 750,000 people registered to vote this week. New registrations, according to the AEC. You're right. Sounds a bit dodgy to me. So we've had 750,000 people turn 18 in the last four years. Or migrate well, in, or... We've had state elections. Yeah, righto. So that was just for Queensland? No, no, nationwide. Righto. I think there's going to be a lot of fraudulent registrations in our current electoral system. It'll be mm. interesting to see who shows up. Don't some countries stamp your hand with permanent ink? I don't know. If you've voted to cut down on that sort of thing? I don't know. I think they do in some of the uh, less technologically sophisticated ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, mark your ballot in ink and vote once. Don't vote more than that. Mm-hmm. With the key being vote once, not many times, and not none. Yeah, you only got to do it once. There's no sense subjecting yourself to that pain and suffering more than that. Yeah. Going through the two-hour line. That's the real reason to vote early, so you don't get stuck in a line on election day. <laughs> on election day. Last time I voted on the day was for the 20, oh, it was a state election, I think. Yeah. And I showed up at the church that was up the road. Mm. Hooey. 
walked out the door and the line was past my street, mm-hmm. like past, past my entrance. Here we go. Walk down to the end of the street to find the end of the line. It's in the wrong direction. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a very slow moving day. And, you know, it was also overcast and started to rain. Yuck. So, yeah, not a pleasant experience. I think that might have actually been the last federal election. Because we had a state election two years ago, and it was a different place because I voted early. Yeah, must have been the last federal election. Anyway, that sucked. Yeah, it would have. <laughs> last federal election, we were up in Emerald, so... I don't recall voting being that bad. I think it was 45 minute wait. Or something along those lines. The only problem with Emerald was parking, but... I think where we are, it's one of the local high schools, so. So, you keep referring to living in an emerald. Mm. You're talking about Emerald Victoria, right? Yes, not, not Queensland. I was going to say, because up in Emerald, isn't Emerald a suburb of Melbourne? (laughs) No, it's not a suburb. It's a small country town on the outskirts of suburban Melbourne. It's actually in the Dandenong Ranges, and it's separated from suburbia by about 10 kilometres. Okay, fair enough. We used to um, joke slash acknowledge that Emerald was basically 25 minutes from anywhere. Like, and by anywhere is sort of decent supermarket slash hardware store. Yeah, they've got supermarkets and hardware stores in the town itself, but they're country town style operations, not, you know, they're, they're not your full-blown suburban... Woolworths or whatever. So if you wanted to go to a full-size Woolworths or Coles or you wanted to go to a Bunnings or something like that, it was 25 minutes each way. (laughs) So you could come west down into the suburbs, into the suburb that we're in now, or you could go south down into Pakenham or... I mean, heaven forbid you could go north and up into sort of Ringwood Lilydale, but um, it was always sort of 25 minutes one way. So you got fairly good at making lists because you'd waste an hour if you forgot something. (laughs) Yep. Which did happen on occasion. It was a nice place, but the property we're on now is just, I don't know, it's better from many, many, many different reasons. The only drawback is you don't have Puffing Billy in your backyard. (laughs) No. I think the only drawback is is that there really isn't enough room for the dog to run. Like, you can get her some exercise, but she can't... She can't hit top speed 
before she's crashing into the fence. So, from that perspective, we could have done well. If I'd not put the workshop in, maybe it would have been better for her, but... Is the shed getting much use at the moment? Uh, it gets used basically every day. Well, that's good. Um, because the matte top coat I use is a... Um, non-acrylic I think yeah it's an aerosol and I don't spray aerosols in the house so but um, the spray booth gets used every day pretty much As you can see by my Facebook post, I've been painting some infinity. And upsetting your mum. <laughs> yeah. I need to talk to her, I suppose. <laughs> I need a t-shirt that says, World's Worst Son. Well, I feel accomplished. What have you done? I got a like on my uh, skeletal death knights from Don Higgins. So, hey! Thanks, Don. I love your work, by the way. I think I've said that before. Oh, I don't think we can say that often enough. Like that... Um... The portrait he produced for 1879 in his last live stream is gobsmacking. You're not wrong. You ain't wrong at all. Go so far as to say genius. If the Ford Ellis book is being held up just for the artwork, then I don't mind because it's going to be worth it. Yeah. There's a bit of wrangling going on around that at the moment. As in, let's say marshalling rather than wrangling. Because wrangling sort of infers a conflict and that's not what I wanted to convey. But um, there, the efforts are being applied. I'm also very happy with the Interceptor rulebook. There are a couple of things that bug me when I read it, but, you know, well, the rules are clearly explained, which is nice. There is a... There was a quick update done. Mm -hmm. Because there was some glaring grammar and layout problems. Well, I didn't and, notice too much aside from missed and, light breaks and nouns not being capitalised. Yeah. So, and a couple of spaces needing to be inserted here and there. Yeah, that was primarily what it was. It was, it was a, there was a further clean-up done. So if you download it again which I believe you can do. Well, I'm not sure. You might you find that's... Full downloads off the link. You might find that some of that stuff has been cleaned up. Uh, 
and again kudos to Don for turning that around that quickly it was a list of about 30 things ish you know misspelled name and stuff maybe I won't maybe I'll keep my first ever download of it there's not, nothing to say you can't have both <laughs> I mean yeah you, know, you can rename files I think I just wanted to get out there that I was the first person to download it <laughs> <laughs> thanks Ross yes <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of the advanced flight maneuver rules. Yeah, I think they should be part of the basic game. <laughs> oh boy! Well, it's just a piloting and a control test before your attack run. Mm-hmm. I mean, they so elegantly solved the conga line problem. Yeah, but it does slow it down. Oh, so you add an extra dice roll into it. Everything's a trade-off. Yeah, but it opens... For the cost of an extra die roll, you've got so many more tactics and the game becomes so much more interesting. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it should be part of the standard rules. Well, the beautiful thing about it is is that you, you own it now, so you can do what you like with it. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just me, but I didn't... The one thing I was a little bit disappointed in is you've got all these different weapon types being... Mm and lance beams and long lance beams and end beams and T beams and the works and baked beans. Baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> There's no special effects for weapon types. I guess that's something that might come down the line when you can uh, modify ships mm-hmm. to have a different loadout but there's no like oh an end scrambler scrambles your controls of your victim and so they have a minus one penalty to controls the tests um oh for the next round after they hit yeah you know things like that yeah i know what you're talking about yeah that's the only thing that i think I've found so far is missing and I can see leaving it out at this stage for simplification because there is a lot that's going on. Let's just say there was more than one heated discussion about points costs. (laughs) Uh, And so trying to balance those kinds of effects, uh, in the time frame that we had didn't work. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Not complaining, it's just a Yeah. yeah. A nice to have. There's a buttload of things we would have liked to have got in there, but But you needed space for a forty page one round explanation with diagrams. Beautiful diagrams, though. Oh, yeah. Well photographed, too. Don't know who painted the miniatures. Yeah. Sack him. <laughs> Photographers are damn good, though. Oh, <laughs> 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 We all remarked on how well the photographs came out. 
some idiot bumbling around with an SLR finally figured out what to do. You mean it wasn't just an iPhone drop? Nope, absolutely not. Digital <laughs> SLR on a tripod with a remote shutter. So my question is, was the example game actually played out? And no. it was a true recording, or it was no. just something you fudged for? And no, it was something that Todd uh, did all the work on, as a matter of fact. And so you got He did, the, this is, he, he the, said, this, this is the example, I need these photos. So I went, okay. And then came back and went, yeah, that doesn't work. I need these photos instead. Okay. And these ones as well. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like everything else, it it, it it changes as it goes. I mean, it was a good process. It certainly wasn't an easy process, but it was a good process. We were all pretty sick of each other by the end of it, but it's okay. Yesterday's team meeting was all about what we're doing next. Dare I ask? Well, you can ask. But I can't give you an answer, because, frankly, I don't know. Fair enough. Todd was talking about jumping off a bridge. I said the, he was only allowed to do that if it was in the RV and there was a camera pointed at it and rolling. <laughs> what did he have to say to that? Oh, we all just had a bit of a laugh and moved on. Fair enough. I, you know, I... It, it's hard to understate how, how difficult it is when, you know, somebody's on the line for all the rules, all the fiction, layout guidance, photo guidance, and you're attempting to cram what is effectively a day job into evenings around a day job, which is also stressful. And, you know, they took the the living decision to move into their RV. They're in Florida at the moment, I think. Um, yeah, I think so. so he has internet at the speed of molasses. You know, and... On, on, on both the good side and the bad side, we've had virtually no feedback there was a round by some of the guys that were involved in the play testing talking about you know the various grammatical and layout and typography problems in the first pdf which was reacted to and dealt with but from the consuming public's perspective we've heard virtually nothing which is somewhat concerning. I think a lot of people are waiting for their boxes. Yes. I mean, it's been a lot of it for me. I'm waiting to actually hold it in my hands, but it doesn't stop me from reading the book. Well, I mean, you've given me some feedback, so. Yeah, and that feedback's already been addressed, which is good. Mm. Yeah. 
If you were a centaur, what colour would your cape be? Colour that probably wouldn't mind getting dirty. Something that all my friends are wearing too. Crimson. Crimson. King Crimson and the Coconuts. Well, that's a pink. And we've got a, a lighter red and a darker red. The darker red? Why not? Uh, uh, I'm just laughing at something I didn't say about those um, necromancers I painted. Right. The one with the red cape. Yes. <laughs> uh, he put on one red for his uh, cape and then promptly forgot which shade I used. <laughs> oh, because no. there was a spot that I missed. Yeah. Like on the underside of the cape. I'm like, ah, crap better go back and I use the darker red instead of the lighter one well, it's on the underside oh, so so. Darker. well I redid the entire cape oh. you should, you know, like, yeah it could use another coat oh wait now it's really dark red instead of bright red oh well <laughs> I think it actually looks better this one but... <laughs> <laughs> you could have just <laughs> Waved it off as a tea stain. It's like, oh, you had a bit of an accident at the dinner table. No, I think it looks better. I like it when you're correcting mistakes and you end up with a better result overall. That's that's a win. Well, I think it's better. What other people think, I don't know. It's and quite irrelevant. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, there you go. Crimson cape. But it also reminded me that I hadn't varnished the uh, the miniature right. at that point after the first cape because it started to run a little bit. Mm. It reactivated with the new stuff going on top, and I'm like, mm. Mm, okay. Oh, well. That's what happens when you don't paint for a couple of days. You forget what you've done. Mm. Hey, wait, you said days. Yeah. I'd have said hours. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> this was at a point when there were still other demands on my time. Who am I again? Uh, you're the headless guy in the inset photo. That's it. And the disembodied hands in the other one. So speaking of headless, I need some new goggles. That's the next thing I want to spend some money on. You're talking about um, magnifying goggles because, quite frankly, the ones that I've got, they're, they're awful. They're awful quality. They've fallen apart. Just crap. Right. The worst J car product I've ever bought. Wow. That's saying Just something, man, considering man, we've been through those USB, <laughs> oh sorry, Bluetooth <laughs> headphones. Well, you know, at least those headphones work for purpose. Right. For the most part. They only drop their connection every other minute. <laughs> <laughs> and ran out after an hour. Oh, 58 minutes. <laughs> that I, wasn't... Just listened, I just listened back to that the other night. I'm like, oh my God, those <laughs> are awful. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I've got another set here. I'm happy to send them to you. <laughs> no, put them through the wash. 
Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Put it through the bin. It's yeah, that was a terrible purchase. Never mind. Um, the headphones I've got on, the the wireless ones, they were, I think, three fifty. I think. So, I went from budget headphone to budget headphone to budget headphone to this, this is absolute crap. I'm buying something decent. Because I spent a lot of my day in headphones because of remote work. Yeah. And if after an hour I've got stabbing pains in my head because my headphones are hurting me, it's not a good work experience. So, yeah. They will be part of my next year's tax return. Fair enough, too. Mm. Um, goggles. Goggle goggles. What do you want? Do you want... Comfortable with strong magnification. So the set I've got on... And when I'm finished painting this blob of hair, I'll show them off. They they have two slots for magnification, which means you can compound. Mm. So I've only got a single lens in at the moment, but you can... And I think I'm at three and a half magnification. But like, for example, I could put the, the two by magnification lens in as well and end up with seven by. The only problem with seven by is just that you're basically touching the miniature because the focal length is so short. Mm. So that's why I'm at a, a comfortable distance to work and still get a decent amount of magnification. But... The other thing about them is, is they've got a, a battery box in them. Because they've got a light on the front. Um, I tried that with the batteries in. Because you can, you can take the whole thing in out mm. and the batteries go in underneath in there the, the problem with it is is with the batteries in it it's too heavy like you can't wear it for more than about 10 seconds and it's dragging your face into the table but in, triple A's is it that's three triple A's uh, so yeah. you can see in here there's the two obviously they they flip up and there's the two slots. Yeah, yeah. I see how all that works. The ones that I've got were similar. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, is that the build quality is just garbage. Yeah. Um, they're not great. But they... These are only... I've only got two and a half by lenses in, as a matter of fact. But um, I gave my old set on. No, I didn't. I've got these as well. They're filthy because they haven't been used in ages. So these are the electronic style ones. These may have actually even been. Oh no, they were, they were an eBay purchase, but that's the kind of thing you could get from JK. Again, they're super cheap and nasty, and but these did five years worth of work, so you know um, they did get chucked at the wall at one point. <laughs> um, I just wonder which lenses are in these. If I can 
tell. Nope, can't tell. Anyhow, um, you can get top shelf versions of both of these. Um, if you're willing to pay more than a hundred bucks. Well, it might be if they're not garbage. Well, yeah, this is the thing, I suppose. You'd have to have to go and look at reviews and stuff. But... Try them on yourself. At that point, you've already bought them. So, I, I, yeah, I don't mind these. Um, they're not. Robust, let's use that word. So, being careful with them, I, I suppose, is a necessity. So, my goggles had three uh, three different sets of lenses. They weren't removable. Well, I suppose they could have been, theoretically. Mm. They were all screw-ins, but they had a two-and-a-half and a four, and they could combine. Yeah. And there was a single lens that could swing down in front of those as well. Right. That would bring you up to a ten times. Wow. Okay. And the way that these ones were advertised, it was as though you could put on a second of the swing downs and get uh, two lots of ten times, one on each eye, which would have been, I thought, really cool. Uh because it's only on one eye and it's not much use because you have no depth perception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So painting would so have I, been... Yeah. Anyway. So... Such, such brittle material... Oh, yeah, okay. ...that they were made out of that tightening a screw that would inevitably come loose from the vibration of picking it up or putting it down. Mm. You retighten it and you crack the... Yeah. The plastic yeah. and yeah, just awful material, awful build quality. Yeah, just yeah, cheap, mm -hmm. cheap. Except they were thirty-four bucks, I think. Yeah, well, that's cheap because if you buy a a, a good quality, purpose-built jeweler's set, they're hundreds of dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. But still, just. Mm. I think the set I've got on went thirty bucks on eBay. So, and I, I, I got suckered in by some advertising. There was a, a set being advertised a couple of years ago now. They were like glasses. You know, they they sat on your head like you're wearing a pair of glasses. Mm. And you know they were extolling the virtues of wearing them like this and they were more comfortable and blah 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 but and i bought a set and i put them on once and they clashed with my glasses so they clashed with the glasses frames i couldn't wear them without wearing my own glasses because they, they just didn't cover the range of sight that i needed in order to be able to work and so they were effectively, for me, they were effectively useless. Um, so I gave them to a mate a little while ago. And he was like, wow, I can actually see what I'm painting. So, you know, he he's happy with them. He's getting good use out of them. But they were, for me, they were shit. So... It may be that you have to try a couple of different types until you find one that actually works. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could afford that. <laughs> <laughs> if wishes were fishes, I'd have died from food allergies long, long ago. <laughs> if wishes were fishes. There'd be a nasty smell in the air. Is that how that finishes? I have no idea. Because the one I heard was if wishes were horses. Episode of Star Trek. 
Is it? Yeah, it was the name of a first season episode of Deep Space Nine. Fishes were horses. Yeah, Rumpelstiltskin shows up in Chief O'Brien's daughter's bedroom. That's, that's how not, that one starts off. That's not creepy at all. And it ain't an imaginary friend. Mm. <laughs> Do you notice that we haven't had a visitation at this point? Not at this point. Not at this point. Probably can't see what I'm doing either. Not real well. Off the table like that. It's okay, I was just popping bubbles. And that's not a Michael Jackson reference. I was about to ask if it was a euphemism for farting. <laughs> so if you're a really heavily armoured high elf and you had a cape on, what colour would your cape be? Same colour as the rest of my friends. So, high off coloured. I've got... Two capes to do. Maybe I'll do him in a bright green. I notice Joe's disappeared out and it makes me think she may have gone up to the shops and that might have been a bit premature. Because we went out to the movies last night, the postie couldn't deliver our parcels, so we have to go to the post office to pick them up, but they're not going to be there till lunchtime. Mm, so I think should... just post office's way of controlling crowds, to be honest. Yeah, probably. Although I could check my email to see if I've got a ready for collection notice. I've got some colour shift paint in this box that I have to pick up. Ooh. Fancy. Mm. Looking forward to trying those out. Uh, what brand is it? I think they're Vallejo. I think. Mm -hmm. I'll go back and check. Was that a successful experiment? You heard nothing? Yeah. Excellent. I can use the Vortex Mixer. 
That's great. Did you finish the Evangelion? So I finished the Mecca itself, but I haven't touched the um, the artillery piece that comes with it. Right. Which is uh, five and a half pages of instructions dedicated to it. <laughs> That's excellent. Thing is how that's about as many for both arms and the head. <laughs> right. Like each limb is page and a half. Yeah. So five pages for this artillery piece is it's not daunting, it'll just take a while and once mm -hmm. I get started I won't want to stop, so I wanna have time to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's currently on my desk with a very thoughtful expression and pose. <laughs> I'll take a photo and show you. You yeah. can see exactly what I mean yeah. by thoughtful. It's like, hmm, where did I leave that artillery piece? When will I leave my damn phone? <laughs> oh my goodness, the chips. Chips? Yeah. It was a smoke alarm ad a long time ago. think it was an ad a long time ago oh, I had my smoke alarms go off last night oh nice for any good reason no mm. I don't believe in a good reason for smoke alarms going off well the good reason for a smoke alarm going off is your house is burning down Every other reason for them going off is not. Like burning the toast. Come on. Yeah, I used to have uh, well, I used to have a proper I used to live in a property in which the smoke alarms were fitted correctly. Right. But I'd have to get up at four AM to go to work. And it was a very cold place, being on the other side of the Great Dividing Range. And getting up at 4am and having a hot shower, you would um, naturally see a lot of fog and steam uh, and water vapour and all that got in. Mm. Basically, it was a fog, fog bank in the house after having a shower at 4am. And they would set off the smoke alarms because they were photosensitive ones. Right. <sighs> yeah. Every morning. I just ended up disconnecting them. Yeah. People only tolerate false positives for so long. Mm. What property in Emerald was almost completely open plan so it was it was a big a-frame house built with huge cypress posts and mud brick so the main living area was completely open and it 
consisted of the lounge, the dining and the kitchen. It was all in one big rectangular space with vaulted ceilings, um, a lot of wood, and the smoke alarm was above the front door, which was in this space. And when Joe was cooking, there was no range hood, no fume extraction. So all the fumes from the cooking would go up into the ceiling, boil around in the, the ceiling space, and make its way down to the area over the front door where the smoke alarm was. So that smoke alarm got disabled because... Because what we you... ended up, what we ended up doing is we ended up buying. You can buy ones now that are room specific, so you can buy an alarm that is designed to go in a kitchen, and it it works slightly differently because it it it's not photosensitive and it's not it's not a general particulate. It, they look for a specific particulate somehow. I don't know how, but anyhow, once once we had that the kitchen type smoke alarm in there, the problem went away. Then it only went off when she really did burn the shit out of something, and the house was full of smoke. So, but yeah. The, Originally, it was just a general purpose one. It used to go off all the time. It just, just drive us nuts. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, all the smoke alarms in this house are wired together, so if one goes off anyway... They all go off. Rip, they all go off. Oh, God. So the neighbours know you've burnt the toast. Or used to walk. Oh, he used a walk, yeah. That's what it was last night. All right, the walk. The walk was being used. Well, the next door neighbours in at their property in Emerald, her smoke alarm would go off two or three times a week. When I first got to Darwin, I was staying in the one of the two local mantra hotels in the Darwin CBD. And smoke alarms would go off two or three times every night. And if one went off in one room, they would go off in all of the rooms. It was people having a fag in bed. Yeah, right. After a sex cigarette. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a no-smoking hotel. <laughs> yeah. And just, bam, everyone out, evacuate now, evacuate now. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I stopped responding to it pretty much the first night. Yeah. It happened two or three times a night. And then I found out that the director of the company was also staying there. Right. He was the cause of a lot of it. Right. Because he'd light up. He was, he was a pack and a half a day, man. Yeah, right. And he would light up on the toilet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd just do it unconsciously in the middle of the night. Yeah, just to have it. $800 call-out fee from the fire brigade. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. it's the director of the company. Can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not his money, it's federal government's money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, after I moved out of there, um, I moved back into the residential apartments a year or two later, and it still went on, but not nearly as frequently. Yeah. I think they actually had a lot of complaints from the fireys, so they changed the you know, smoke detectors in the building. Yeah.
but um, yeah, kind of a cursed building. Uh, there was this one day when Darwin's main power station kind of um, didn't blow up, but the transmission tower right outside the power station's gates fell over. Oof. So all of Darwin and surrounds was without power for uh, 16 or 17 hours. All right. The uh, evacuate now emergency alarm in that same uh, Mantra Hotel came on. Yeah. And everyone evacuated because you knew it was for real because they had staff get on the all building intercom and say, listen, we need to evacuate everyone because the water pumps aren't <laughs> aren't uh, supplied with power. Yeah. There's no water, there's no air conditioning, you need to you need to evacuate. And this is I think it was about one AM. Right. In Darwin summer. So yeah. hot and sticky. Yeah. And no one's wearing their clothes. They're all in their bed clothes, which in Darwin is just about nothing. Yeah. They evacuated the entire damn building, 30 floors, a couple thousand people. Yeah. And had had nowhere for them to go. Yeah. They were all just crowded, milled into the lobby. <laughs> and the power didn't come on until 2 p.m. the next day. Yeah. So there were a lot of people extremely unhappy. And I made the clever decision to stay put. In your room. I, I did yeah, I didn't evacuate. I was still in the room. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't come around and do a, a room check and kick you out. But they couldn't. The lifts were out and the the fire escapes were blocked off. Ooh. Because people trying to get out. Fire escapes blocked off is not a good sign. Well blocked with people. Yeah. yeah. They didn't go back up to to check. Yeah, that's just pure laziness. Hmm. So yeah, that was a good fun time. Hmm. I got a day off work out of it. Yeah, I wouldn't have said a pleasant day off work. Well, I had a couple of litres of water in the fridge. Yeah. I used one toilet for one business and one toilet for another one. Because there were two bathrooms. And I opened up the windows and I got a bit of breeze off the balcony. Yeah. And then when the power came on? I laughed and I flushed the toilet. <laughs> but here's the kicker. Despite the entire region losing all of its power, that particular hotel was the only one that made its people evacuate, made its residents evacuate. Everyone yeah. else was, uh, you know what, it's fine, stay in your room. Yeah. That was the only one in the entire city that evacuated its residents and then had nowhere for them to go. So the news crews all came up and filmed everyone you know, sans clothing. And... Anyway. Good publicity. <laughs> Any publicity. Well, the NT News is famous for, you know, having topless, topless people in it. Yeah, really? Yeah. And, and not the topless like me now, where I'm just a disembodied. No, attractive young women, some baby. Mm. Oh, you've reminded me. I've been watching a lot of old cricket games. Like, stuff from just the end of the World Series cricket era. 
the the 1982 season and and things like that and i'd forgotten that the cameraman used to scope the crowd and then focusing on young ladies sunbaking i'd forgotten that they did that and it was encouraged. It was a different time. It's a different time. <laughs> Listening to Tony Gregg commentate going, Oh, wow, you wouldn't be able to say that today. Mm. Uh, probably because he did say, say it and get into trouble. <laughs> Well, I can't imagine today's current crop of commentators commentating that way on a on a woman. No. Probably because a lot of the commentators are. Well, they've started to include, you know, the 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 representatives of the women's game as commentators on the men's game as well, which I don't think is yeah, a bad thing. Yeah. I'll start caring when they do that for netball. Well, male commentators in for the netball. Mm. Mm. They used to have them. They got rid of them all. All right. But then they used to have male commentators for everything. Like To be a commentator, you had to be male. Pretty much. I finished Le Mans too. Oh, good. Who won? Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> it was 2018. It was the year that all the other major manufacturers pulled out. I thought it was an old one that you were watching. It was 2018. That's old. That's old, old. No, 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 no. Not, not back in Group C or anything like that. Um, although I don't mind watching Group C. I like those cars. Um, but yeah, it took it took twenty years for Toyota to win Le Mans. Twenty years, twenty attempts, and. Um, They've won it every year since, so they've won 18, 19, 20, and 21. With 22 yet to be run, obviously. It's interesting stuff. Well, I thought it was. Some people just look at it and go, oh my God, that is so boring. Like watching paint dry, except with car crashes. That's it. Well, you know, I could knock over a bottle of null oil, I suppose, to spice things up a bit. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> well, there, were, there were plenty of incidents, that's for sure. was very funny at points in time listening to commentators that had clearly just woken up having had you know a two hour break or something like that a attempt to function <laughs> from a commentary point of view it's uh, very funny up I didn't know that Jackie Chan owned a racing team yep Jackie Chan DC Racing mm. yes 
There's a couple of celebs involved at the moment. Dr. Dreamy off Grey's Anatomy. No idea who that is. Oh, I'm trying to think of his name. Um, I've never watched the show. So no. Um, um, God, what's his name? I've got the proton part of the name, but I haven't got his. Anyhow, he runs... Was running. Eric Shepherd. That was the character. Yeah. It's the actor. Um, Patrick Dempsey. Yeah, so Dempsey Proton Racing run a, a car in GTE Am, which is the amateur flavour of the GTE class. Not. 100% sure what separates GTE Pro from GTE Am. I think it might be the ratio of the number of professional drivers in the car. I've started watching the 2021 season and I think they shifted from Porsche to Aston Martin at some point in time. But, um, yeah, they won, like, he won, as a team owner, he won Le Mans in 2018 in GTEM, so. But, but of course, it... it this has had a dangerous side effect. Rich people getting in on the art. No. Well, now I want to buy a slot car set. Oh. Well, they don't make end scale slot car sets, to my knowledge. No, they don't. So there you go. Well, it that doesn't be the term. Doesn't have to fit in with the train set. See, that's how, when I was a kid, yeah. I used to read Australian Model and Hobby magazine. And I saw this ad for a piece that could cross hetero scale uh, track for both slot cars and railway. Yes. And I'm like, oh my God. Uh-huh. And so I spent one of my spare um, school notebooks designing track layouts incorporating both with crossovers and I'm like yeah yeah when I grow up and have money this is what I want to do <laughs> I kind of still want to yes although I'm not sure about the whole growing up thing <laughs> I'm not sold on that I got bigger yeah I got bigger <laughs> not about mentally. I grew, just not necessarily up. I grew out. Yeah, we both did that. We've got um, one of Joe's grandkids over tomorrow for most of the day, I think. And Joe's going to make a chocolate cake. And I'm like, no.
is a very thoughtful expression on that Evangelion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was purely by accident because the beggar fell over. Right. Toppled face forward. Yeah. And bent that arm upwards. Just realise I'm talking to myself with that push to talk on. Yeah. You no, know, you you were you were making noise. <sighs> um. Yeah. yeah it's one of those happy little accidents. Now the reason I went for this specific kit in this specific configuration was because it had option parts for the shoulder. Yeah. It had an option of whether you wanted to build it with big shoulder blades on it or not. Mm -hmm. and one of my previous ones of these I've built has this horrible habit of falling over face first yeah, and breaking a shoulder. Right. So I decided, you know what, the next one I build won't have shoulders. Right. And they've designed a kit just for me. Yep. <laughs> I assume... <laughs> There were people in the world that actually complained about the fact that their model fell over and broke its shoulders. Ah, it's based on the movies. I mean, mm -hmm. it didn't have shoulders in the beginning of the first movie. It was only on screen like that for about 10 minutes, but, you know, that's yeah. enough to get a model kit. Yep. I still haven't watched it. Fair enough. I've been watching the Mons. Mm. Technically more listening than watching. Because well, I've been painting. Yeah, of course. This week I rewatched all of Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister. That would have been great. I love that show. Mm. I can watch it over and over and over and have. Mm hmm. I just needed a break from Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> Not the show I can watch over and over and over and yeah. over. And have been for about the last two months. Right. Oh, man. This is not cleaning up particularly well. Oh, that one's just got a streak of dyed purple hair. That's all it is. I wonder what colour I'm going to paint. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. What do you think of that tag, Matty? Sorry, what tag? The one I posted the photos to Facebook on, the one that my mother commented on. 
Oh, I don't actually recall what that is off the top of my head. Give me a second, I'll look at it. It's an iguana. Okay, I thought you meant something totally different aside from tag. Well, Infinity calls them tags, so... Yeah, I thought you meant like, oh, I tagged the post with this hashtag blah blah blah. Mm. People are getting lazy and corrupting the language. No, I thought it was a cool miniature. And I thought it was a very good paint job too. Yeah, I thought you meant you made some obscure little reference no. No. in in the post settings, like I usually do when I post on Facebook. I'll say I am at this location, which is tangentially somewhat related to one word in the post. Right. Like in the interceptor group, I post that I'm at a space-related location or right. an interceptor-related location. Right. It's got nothing to do with the game, but, you know, that's what I thought you meant by tag. And I'm like, yeah, I don't remember that. But tag, if that's the name of the miniature, you know, it's actually very cool. And yeah. I do remember that. It's a, an acronym for Tactical Armored Gear. Mm. Yeah, that's an iguana from the Nomads. With an extra set of arms. Well, that's the pilot. Oh, I get it now. So it's a it's a suit, not a. Yeah, yeah, I get how it works now. Hmm. I like them. I think they're a cool piece of kit. Yeah. No denying that. Right. I really, really struggled with it, to be honest. Really struggled. Um, it's been stripped. So the first... The first paint job came off it completely because I was really unhappy with it. So, and of course, what happens when you bathe super glue in isopropyl alcohol? Super glue comes apart. So, while painting it the second time, it came apart. Oy. So, yeah, all kinds of dramas, which is why it ended up as sort of bat beaten and battered as it did. Because it's like, oh, this ain't ever going to be perfect. So. Well, it's just been through the wars, literally. Well, that's what I figured. It's a piece of combat gear. It's going to get the heck kicked out of it. Hmm. I completely missed hair. So if Very you were cool. if, if you were an elven high elven naked warrior, what colour would your loincloth be? won't say what I was <laughs> going to say to that proposition. He's got a beard. I have to make sure I do his beard. 
Oh, just I'm a bit stuck. How about a medium sort of blue? Darker than sky blue, but not dark blue. Right. A really bright blue? A bright one. Right. Here we go then. Bright blue. You don't like it? No, I put a bit of blue on his butt. Better than blue on his balls. That was the problem I was having last night, actually. Blue balls. <laughs> blue butts, actually. Blue butts. I started a unit of ice switches last night. Yeah, right. And went with the blue-gray uh, scheme for this particular unit. Yep. Painting string panties is uh, yeah, that's not easy. Difficult with the deferring out size two slash zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, blue loincloth. Yeah, there you go. I think that looks pretty good. Mm. It's got a dark stain at the wrong end, but, you know. Well. It all flows downhill. Battle damage. Use that. So what's on for the rest of the weekend? Uh, usual sort of Saturday things going on. Um, I have to get some more audio editing in. This weekend, probably Sunday at this point. Right. Um, oh, speaking of audio editing on Sunday, new uh, new episode coming out on Sunday, so that's good. Excellent. First one of those in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it for me. How about yourself? How's the group going? Yes. Um, well, we're all still friends. No, know. no, you know, but from the perspective of people's time and... I think people are still enjoying it. Yeah. We did have a sit down, all four of us still playing together a month ago and sounded everyone out on it. Yeah. Um, 
asked where people wanted to go with their characters and tried to make some plans around that. Yeah, I think as a group, it's people still want to play. Oh, okay, that's good. Mm. We're just having a hard time with scheduling. Yeah, real life. Well, Cassie got herself into Gen Con as a vendor, so... Wow. She's having to spend a, a bit of time <laughs> getting stock going, stock levels up for that. Yeah. Plus all the other conventions that she's doing. I'll have to figure out who she is and stop by. Yeah, well... Be the one that smells good in the sea of people that don't. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, that one. What is she selling? Soap. Soap. Custom made RPG themed soaps. Kind of product that people <laughs> collect and don't use. <laughs> well, what she does is she's got 20 or 30 different scent colors and it's split up by uh, Dungeons and Dragons race, alignment, and uh, class. Yeah. You know, a dozen different options for each. And it's Make your own adventure. No, smell like your own adventure. <laughs> Pick your race, color, uh, race, yep. alignment, and class. Yeah. One of each. And a, a calligraphy scroll with the character's name in a presentation box. Right. Makes a great gift. It's yeah. about something. Which is actually pretty good. It is. They're, they're good soaps, you know, they're all natural and. They smell bloody nice. Yeah. As I recall, human is a freshly baked bread scent. Right. Mmm. And gnome is ginger ale. But that freshly baked bread soap scent is really freshly baked bread. Mm -hmm. It smells like it, and you smell like it after you wash mm. with it. Right. I... Yeah. So hopefully that goes well for her. Yeah. This is nice. So I assume both her and Max will be there then. Well, she certainly will. I'm not sure about Max. I mean, Max will probably want to go. <laughs> Whether he can get time off work or not is a different yeah, matter. Yeah, it's reasonable. Well, I've already booked mine. Oh, cool. You've actually got your tickets. Uh, well, yeah. You've got, got your flights. Flights. Um, first part of the accommodation is taken care of. I think Gen Con accommodation is taken care of. I think... Um, Todd's boss. Um, I think he's <laughs> leaving Nadine in... You know, around Seattle. Not sure, but... Um, Todd Ross and I are flying from... Portland to Indianapolis um, and Carol's coming with us so Ross and Carol are disappearing off after the convention for something fair enough too and I think Todd and I are flying back I'm not sure uh, those flights haven't been organised yet so we're both flying back over to the 
west coast and I'm coming home again via Portland because it was cheaper to get return flights to Portland than it was to try and get a single flight into Portland and then a return flight back from Indianapolis by the tune of about 1500 bucks. So, Jeez. Um, yeah, I've managed to get return flights to the US uh, for including insurance for under two grand. That's not bad at all. It isn't. And when you consider that it's a 20, I think it's a 21 hour trip over and a 22 hour trip back. Um, very pleased. It, it also comes with two 32 kilogram checked bags, not one. So, but it does mean an additional stop because going via Hawaiian, so you've got to make a stop in Hawaii. Mm. But then what it means is Melbourne to Sydney, Sydney to Hawaii, Hawaii to Portland. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that breaks it up nicely because you're only stuck in a chair for six or seven hours, not 15. So, it could be good. It could be bad. I don't know yet. But all the flights I did to India, they all go via Singapore. So you get the same sort of break. You get seven or eight, it's actually more likely eight or nine hours to Singapore. And then it's a four and a half or five hour flight, Singapore to India. So. Not that this is a, a terrible conversation or anything, but I thought I might just give you a time check. It's uh, three past ten. Three past ten. Mm. Oh my goodness, the chips. <laughs> well, good progress anyway. I might just do the tail on the horse. Um, a brown, a brown, a brown, a brown. This one. I like this idea about being able to use the vortex mixer. bit easier on the wrist than shaking, is it? Yeah. Um, contrast paints, some of them settle really dramatically. And um, the Vortex gives them a really nice kick. Whereas you can be shaken for 10 minutes and there still be... A, sediment at the bottom so yeah, I'll have to do something else with that tail that's not going to come up well all right there we are some high elf personalities with a range of different colors splattered all over them there's a lot of work left to do in that I mean just this figure alone the the, the amount of detail in the armor yeah, the cavalry mounts are just bloody insane yeah, in the yeah. demon world range. Yeah, so a few hours more yet, and I have a couple more infinity figures to go to. So today we'll be largely painting. Well, it's not so bad, is it? It's not bad at all. Oh, I think I might go and do some of the same. Good stuff. All right. Thanks, folks. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend.